welcome to another episode of Dos Naf Sinkos. This is episode number 85. This week we cover America, the motion picture. But before we get into it, as always, I'm your host, David. I'm Stuart. And I'm Bet. Uh, wait, why, why did you count down to record and then hit it and then it started counting down? Because he's a fool. <laughs> because America. Three, two, one. <laughs> Starting in five. five <laughs> <four>. <laughs> I'm serious this time. Five, six. Pre seven. countdown complete. <laughs> countdown initiated. Um, so, guys, outside of the movie of the week this week, uh, what else did you see, Ben? Oh, I watched actually a ridiculous amount of movies this week, but wow. in terms of new ones, uh, I ended up watching Luca, which was the new Pixar film. Is that a movie about Luka Doncic? That's what I said. And then Letty got really <laughs> mad at me because she said that's that's the wrong nationality. <laughs> Wait, what what nationality is so Luka, Luka L U C A C C with a C. Uh, yeah, not I kept making that joke about Luka Doncic and it just did not stick. But I thought Luka Doncic was our boy. He was. He he is our he boy. He is our boy. Was and is our boy. He is. Man, that that boy, man. Mm. He's so uh, hot right now. He is, man. Everyone's just he's, too fucking small. He's my hair, he's my hair role mo- role model. <laughs> it's so it it, it kind of reminds me of um uh crap. What was the name of the uh, Ben Stiller's uh, guy from Dodgeball? Something Goodman. John oh. Goodman. No. You mean his? You mean his? The his character, character, evil name, character. Yeah, yeah that's know. where that's that's where I uh my original hair idol was. Yeah, let's look you it wanted to, you wanted to have that hair. It's so dangerous and and just full of volume. <laughs> well, if you got a Globo Gym membership, yeah. <laughs> we're better than you, and we know, we it. know it. Oh, is it? Was it White Goodman? <laughs> yeah, there it is. White, oh my god, white I just realized Goodman. this fucking <laughs> his White, name Goodman. Is white Goodman. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, that's a movie um, we watch. It's yeah. a little on the nose. <laughs> I didn't get it till now, Jesus. Wait a minute, are you telling me there's subtle subtle nods to things I would never get if I were to watch things from my childhood again? <laughs> Justin get Long's out. Justin Long's character in that movie is just Justin. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no last name. Um okay. So Ben, what were your thoughts on Luca? Uh so I guess Stu, I think you were talking about like onward being like a Pixar film that kind of hit close to home for you, right? Uh, I think so. Yeah, or, well, it was something that you said that, you know, started the waterworks and kind of, it was something that you could relate to in the terms of, like, the story, I guess, right? Mm-hmm. Or, well, I think Luca would, I guess, be that for me, you know, in terms of story. Like, as an Italian American, I have to say, <laughs> you've been Italian this whole time. Mamma mia, pizza pie, pizza pie, Santa all the mozzarella. <laughs> uh, it, it's a story about this. Um, what was it? It's about this boy sea monster, right? And uh, he eventually runs away from home, try to like find his own way out there in the world, and meets like some other kind of like underdog some outcast kids that also have some home issues and whatnot and they all just run away together and all talk about their dreams of like finding their way out in the world and uh yeah it's something that i kind of you know can relate to and it's also really interesting that this is like a pixar film that's a little more cartoonish than the other ones i feel like pixar has been slowly trying to get to like this the state of like um uncanny realism almost but also mix in some cartoonish uh charm to it like soul be it like an example of something that yeah it's like the lighting and everything and how everything kind of had like some sort of weight to it almost you know mm-hmm. although everyone looks a little cartoonish like the way they move and everything right. and everything was really heavy you know it was something that you would see in the real world but in this movie man everyone is just like <laughs> You know, just jumping off of walls and like you know, getting anvils tossed on their heads and shit. Nice, you know? nice. Yeah, so it was a, a a step in a different direction, but it still looks really, really fucking cool. Uh, and also, holy fuck, the f- 
I was getting so fucking hungry during that movie. It was just so much fucking pasta. Right? <laughs> like everything um, was me. Yeah. No, it was like everything was really cartoonish, and then they bring out the pasta, and it's just like, holy it's fuck, real. that looks real. <laughs> like watching the uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and like, oh my god, I need pizza right pizza. now. Pizza. Yeah, uh, it is like that because I need it, that cheese stretch. It was one of the points of the movie was that there's this contest they have to enter and they have to eat different kinds of pasta. So they just start bringing out every single fucking kind of pasta that they could. And it was just like, oh my fucking God, why am I watching this right now? Yeah. And here's the worst one, penne. <laughs> hey, whoa, 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 whoa. It's What's the worst that? pasta. Oh don't don't oh at me. <laughs> alphabets. <laughs> what are alphabets? Those are better than penne. Because at least you're learning. Yeah. What's penny? It's just a hole with, you know, you're getting delicious you're getting sauce. You're getting delicious. cheated. It's not, you're not getting cheated. It's a very delicious pasta. Mm-mm. It's very good. Literally any po- other pasta is better than that. Stew is raw. Hey, as an Italian American, I can say. <laughs> <laughs> as a card carrying Olive Garden, Listen all to you my can Ita- eat, never Listen. any pasta. <laughs> Listen to my Italian accent. Mamma mia. Yeah, ben, you the. You'd be the worst Italian American. You can't even grow a mustache. Ooh. Did you say would be? I am the worst <laughs> Italian American. Uh, but yeah, I, I, re- I really did enjoy the film. If you guys che- want to check it out, it's I think it's on Disney Plus right now. Yeah, that's yeah. where I watch it. So, so if you were to rank it in the pantheon of like Pixar movies, would this Ooh. fall in the top third, middle third, bottom third? I want to say top third for me, but I could okay. be a little biased. I don't know. I, okay. I really is this enjoyed this film. Higher or lower than Raya and the Last Dragon? Well, that wasn't Pixar. So Are you sure? Yeah, I'm a hundred percent sure that's not Pixar. Oh, that's it, that's Disney animation. Yeah. Isn't David. That, isn't that what Pixar is? Let's just go to our box office rundown. Yeah. <laughs> let's just Wait, we, do. We can't skip you and okay. let's just go. Uh Stu, what about you? What? I think they should just Combine just them. let Pixar handle the animated movies, yeah. Disney. What's the point? Like, what? Literally, what? What's Everything the point? Everything always gets compared to Pixar, anyways. You yeah. own both of them. <laughs> yeah, we have Fire. Uh, actually, Still, you know what? I I didn't. I didn't really watch anything. Uh, come on, movie, did you? Pl- you didn't watch the trilogy of the Boss Baby. No. Trilogy. Wait, there's a trilogy? Isn't it three movies? No, it's two. Back... No, there's a movie and then there's a show or something yeah. and then there's this movie. Wow, David. You what? Sure are think... dumb. You think I'm going to watch the show to get all the lore? Yes. All the boss ba- all that rich boss baby lore. <laughs> the deep universe. <laughs> I mean, how does boss baby come into existence? We have to see the moment of inception. Yeah. I mean, conception. Inception. <laughs> 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 oh yeah, there's the the third one hasn't come yeah. out yet. Honestly, yeah, I haven't really been I haven't really been watching any movie movies per se, but um ever since I noticed that um Mystery Science Theater has a Twitch channel where they basically just play Mystery Science Theater and Mystery yep. Science related theater related things 24 hours a day, Ooh. I've just been kind of watching that. So nice. just leave it in the background. It's awesome. mm mm-hmm. Mhm. Although, if if Mystery Science Theater Twitch channel ever hear, hears this, um, I don't know why you advertise your own channel so much while watching it. Like, How else are they supposed to know? I mean, but it's like every <laughs> 10 minutes, I feel like. like I can see like every 20 or 30 minutes, but come on. But uh, that's that's my only gripe. Yeah, it's like, if you forgot, you... you're watching the Mystery yeah. Science... The yes, Mystery I know, Science I'm Theater. here. I just hey, unlocked an emote. <laughs> it's like people who plug their own, their own merchandise. It's so it's really sad. Hey, guys, and check well, out uh, the <laughs> Joseph Sinko's podcast, Spotify. available on SoundCloud, Spotify, YouTube, Google, and Apple Podcasts, as well as on Twitch at twitch.tv slash dose and a half Sinko's. Streaming to you Tuesday, Monday through Thursday. This is the part where we're all sitting back in our Dose and a half yeah. Sinko's merch. Yeah. It's really sad. <laughs> guys, <laughs> Those that have Cinco's chains are so heavy. They're full of so much good material. There's so know. much lead in them. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, okay. So you're watching that. Me, I actually watched two new movies this weekend. Um, one of them is The Tomorrow Wars. 
Oh, with, damn it. I've been meaning to watch that. The Chris okay. Pratt movie? The it? Chris Pratt movie. Um, I'll leave it at this since I, I don't want to spoil anything for Stu. Uh, I'll leave that up to Ben. So, Ben, have you seen it yet? <laughs> well, not yet, but I'm looking at the Wikipedia so I can spoil it during this episode. <laughs> oh, <okay>. uh, <clears throat> so, well, there's well, a I, war tomorrow? Chris, wow. Chris Pratt, um, J.K. Simmons is in it. Um, mm. And I all I will say is this. I wish there was more J.K. Simmons. That's all I'll say. I mean, that that could describe any movie, really. Exactly. <laughs> but this one's yeah. really, really poignant to it. But uh, essentially, if we were to... Hmm. No, you know what? I don't want to set any expectations. Stu, I want you to watch it, and then I want to hear what you have okay, to say. Okay, fine. About. Watch it now. All right. Bye, guys. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye. Um, and then the other movie I watched was The Wish Dragon on Netflix. The what? Uh, the Wish oh. Dragon. The the Wish Dragon. The Wish Dragon. This sounds like Dragon Ball. <laughs> oh, starring Jimmy O. Yang. How... Uh, Jimmy Wong, Constance Wu, John yeah. Cho's in it. Jimmy O. Yang is in it. That's all you need to know. Actually, he doesn't really talk very much. Oh, and also... That's basically... Joe, it, Joe, Joe. Bobby Lee's in this movie. <gasps> wow. Joe's pro- Joe probably already watched it. <laughs> like, oh, um... Bobby Lee said on his podcast, check out my movie. But here, here's here's the uh, kicker for the Jimmy O Yang and Bobby Lee is they don't really do too much in the movie, just like in real life, yeah. kind of just there. What do you mean, Jimmy O Yang came out with a seafood app? Wow, what? what? <laughs> See, you would only oh, get that if you actually oh. sat through all that terrible, terrible <laughs> show. Oh, Silicon Valley. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. That part wasn't that bad, but. Uh, the show or that one specific part? Because I got to say, the whole show. <laughs> that one specific part wasn't too bad. That was pretty good with Ehrlich Bachman. Just whatever. Okay. Um, but yeah, I thought that was pretty good. I actually went into it thinking that it was going to be a Chinese version of Aladdin. Um, but uh, there's some nice twists in there, for sure. And so I, I pretty I enjoyed it. Um, I would probably give it a... Mm, Eight out of ten. That's pretty good. Uh, so on a regular scale, that'd be a three. <laughs> yeah. So just I, this is the first I've heard of this movie, and it, it it brings up a question I have. What is that? That just this came into my head. Is Netflix based on? Um, oh, <laughs> based on a based on the movie where we watch for this week, and based on this, is Netflix trying to get into China? What do you mean get into China? Or are they already China. there? Are they trying to mm-hmm. expand their? their reach well either that or they're definitely campaigning to add more asian american like influenced movies in general i remember that there was that uh that campaign that they came out with uh saying that oh um we'll show you what we got and they have all these really chinese movie in every pot well not chinese but asian american (laughs) stars in general and um and of course there's like this really big push for um, there was already a really big presence for uh, Korean oh, dramas Jesus. already. Yeah. What? Sorry. I, just, I clicked on the expand the cast of the Wish Dragon. It's in, it shows Bobby Lee's picture. He looks like the fucking penguin from the <laughs> Batman movie. He looks like Danny DeVito. Yeah. I, yeah. Go go here. Oh, here. Let me just send you the link to it. He'll link it. Yeah, but that, that's all. This is only going to be good for for us. <laughs> yeah, but I want to see it. Let's see. <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> hold they, up your hands bobby lee they <laughs> really did bobby lee dirty in this uh in this picture did they that that's pretty accurate of who i guess it is, is but person, i mean isn't it maybe life ever... did that to him. <laughs> <laughs> no one person is responsible for bobby lee what is this? bobby lee is this? not even responsible for bobby lee why is this the first picture that the web internet pulls up of him when there are there are plenty of normal looking pictures of him? Well, I think that's also the same thing that we say about any like movies that star a- like uh, somebody Asian. It's just like that's the person you picked. You could have picked so many other. A- there are over one point six billion, uh, you know, Chinese people in China in general and across the entire planet, and that's the person you picked. But you know, whatever. That's how they pick pictures is mm, from, this, with an algorithm N- natasha lou bordizzo wow <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, let's see what else. Oh, and I finished uh, Westworld. Did you guys, either of you guys, follow that series at all? No. Nah. Oh, whatever. Um, Aaron <laughs> I heard it, okay. Does it get like really bad towards the end or something? Uh, let's see. Let, I'll just say this: the first two seasons, wow, really, really great. Like up until the end of the second season, I was super hyped for season three. Even more hyped when I heard Aaron Paul was going to be in season three, and it, the show is definitely going in a really weird direction. But I was just, I kind of got stuck, uh, same spot as uh orange is the new black where i'm already this far in it's only one it's only eight episodes let's see what happens kind of thing but okay all right um sounds like we're already spending too much time talking about our week nobody cares cares about that they want to hear about the box office rundown yeah Um, Yeah, that's what we want to hear (laughs) yeah giving the people the business i mean what they want all right number one this week f9 the fast saga with 30 million uh number two the box coming oh my god (laughs) Okay, number two. So what, 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 do you, what do you think? Okay, Ben, number two. It's going to be either the Boss Baby or the Forever Purge. Ooh, Boss Baby. I'm going to okay. go Forever Purge. Ben, you owe Stu a sandwich. Because it is ah, the Boss I Baby didn't... family business. You $20 see, million. Forever Purge is rated R. So <laughs> oh! how, does, how does it feel to be served, Ben? Um, yeah, Forever Purge at number three with 15.6. Number four, A Quiet Place Part Two, slowly creeping its way to 150 million uh, total gross here in the U.S. Number five, The Hitman's Wife's Bodyguard. Number six, Cruella. Number seven, Peter Rabbit 2, The Runaway. Number eight, uh, brand new to the top 10 is Zola. I don't know anything about that. Uh, number nine, The Conjuring, The Devil Made Me Do It. And number 10, In the Heights. And so we have, oh, and nobody we have uh, at number 12. That's interesting. Nobody. So, uh, guys, thoughts, comments, questions, concerns? Uh, I'm concerned that I, I got nothing. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Well, I, I guess ho- I uh, we... something would be there. Oh. Well, last week uh, we had uh, the F9 Fast Saga uh, come out, and it roared to a $70 million weekend. Um, obviously, July 4th was uh, about half that. Now, this how about, week... How about this? Hmm? Oh, sorry. We're... Continue. Oh, I was going to say is this week we have, uh, we have Black Widow um, coming out this week. So... Over Ooh. under fifty million dollars. Over, over. Even though Here's half my... of it could be from home, I, or do you know if they're how they're counting money for that? I don't know how they're doing that. Honestly, I think it might be just for the box office that they're counting strictly yeah. physical tickets. Okay, I don't understand so... how movie finances work. <laughs> I don't understand how finances work. Yes. All right, Ben, just get get our interns on. Interns, can you uh, take a look at that for us, please? Thank you. I'm going to need those They're numbers. They're spinning their fingers in circles. <laughs> You're keeping the money moving. The money moving. <laughs> you got to keep the money moving. Um, okay. All right. How if long you think do you it's think Fast Nine okay. is going to stay in the top, you know, oh, five, I think it's done say. next week. Really. Well, because next week, I mean, there is a sandwich on that. Hmm. Mm, Yes. You heard it here. David says F9 is out of the top five by next week. Oh, top five. I think he said top one. Out of the top top one. Who says it like that? (laughs) What do you mean? How do you mean that? that. Top one. Top one. (laughs) Top top one or top nothing. I am top number one. Uh, I'm sorry, I misunderstood you. Then I, I thought you were asking if uh, Black Widow would take over the top spot. Uh, F9, I think the longest running streak was what was uh, two years ago Why? on the t- 2019 was uh, Frozen Two, right? That was in the top five for oh geez, like uh, at least three months or four months or something like that. If it's something Disney, it doesn't surprise me. <laughs> Why is that, Ben? Oh, wait. We're not doing this again. Okay. F- F9, the fast I don't, want to hear, I don't want to hear it again. 
Top five. Um, seeing how the threshold is like four million dollars, I think we're probably going to see at least double digit weeks uh, for F nine Fast Saga in the top five at least. So I would I would put my money on eleven weeks. I don't know, just because of the release schedule with uh, Black Widow coming out and also Space Jam. Um, and might be a little bit competitive, I would say. But who knows? It could still cling on to for dear life. I mean, who wants to see Space Jam with the Lakers like getting eliminated in, in the first round of the playoffs? I know I don't. But Lola Bunny. God damn it, you're right. <laughs> no, I'll just I'll just look for all the R thirty four stuff after after it comes out. R34. Oh, you guys don't know about R34? Rule 34 of the internet. Are we are we going to educate our our listeners? You guys don't know about Rule 34 of the internet? <laughs> then you have no purpose in re- listening to this obscure podcast. Our our, our, uh, our listeners don't know, but I, I do. I, I, I do. Yeah. <laughs> Why don't you explain it for the listeners? So <laughs> go ahead, Ben. Gather around, children, while I explain to you the the whimsy of Rule 34 of the internet. <laughs> Rule 34, according to Wikipedia, is an internet maxim which asserts that internet pornography exists concerning every conceivable topic. The concept is commonly depicted as fan art of normally non-erotic subjects engaging in sexual behavior. Like anything? Every conceivable topic. If you can think of it, there is porn of it. Okay, a piece of bread. Look it up. I don't want to. (laughs) (laughs) Ben, you're not going to be able to because you have safe search at, at work, right? <laughs> and Letty turned on safe search so that you can't do that. Letty! <laughs> Damn it, Ben, you and that bread. This is a safe again. search household. <clears throat> <laughs> We're getting a lot of weird ads. <laughs> why, why, am I, why am I getting ads for see, uh, shrimp and chocolate uh, sex dungeon? <laughs> I really want what I can't have. That's what you came up with. <laughs> I liked Always it. Wanting what he can't have. Yeah, exactly. That was pretty the good. Shrimp and chocolate Cla- sex touch. <laughs> yeah. Classic Ben. <laughs> All right, um, guys. Any other sex, thoughts on the sex talk? party? I don't know. <laughs> shrimp and chocolate sex dungeon. Are you typing that in? <laughs> oh my god. He doesn't have a safe search house. Only so- He's Almost doing so this for the podcast. Stu, said. thank you for your service. Yes. All right, here we, here we go. Shrimp and chocolate. <laughs> we we so. don't have to do this. We don't have to That's do okay. This. I went in uh, incognito. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's going to work. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, nothing here. Oh, thank God. Oh, oh wait a minute. <laughs> like, Coming it, soon. It something, but I don't, I don't want to click on it. <laughs> Wait, the, don't, the don't click coming either. soon or you're coming soon <laughs> yes <laughs> okay all right uh it doesn't sound like there's anything else on this box office all right so let's go over to our movie of the week this week america the motion picture uh ben you're a student of history please uh get us caught up yeah yes oh yes <sighs> Um, you know, random factoid, history was a subject I didn't fail in high school. Uh, you failed classes in high school? No, I said I didn't. I, 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 anyways. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I tonight, think what Stu was saying is if you in, imply that you didn't fail history in high school, it means that no, you failed I did, something No, else. I said I didn't fail. Maybe you're not listening, David. That Maybe you're, you're falling asleep at the wheel here. Other classes. No, 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 no. I said I didn't fail it. You're just, you're not paying attention. You guys aren't but paying attention. That means that not you attention. failed other things, or else you wouldn't no, have just no, said no, I no, didn't so fail you, in you, high school. I don't know. I, I feel like you're just inferring just things, you know? You're, you're not listening to what I'm saying. I, I exactly. That's fail. the point of this entire podcast. Since when do we listen to you? Yeah, I... Yeah, I think, I think Ben's worried he's going to have his Asian card revoked. My, what Asian card? I, didn't, I told you, I'm Italian American. <laughs> Mama mia. <laughs> Mama mia, you don't listen. Why do you say Mama mia for everything? How is he supposed to know I'm, I'm an Italian, Mama mia? 
God, Mama Mia, here we go again. God damn it. Oh, wow. <laughs> All right, Ben. Just caught up. Motion, uh, America, <sighs> the motion picture. Tonight, a dangerous and brutally honest expose about our very own red, white, and blue pride, the origins of our great country, tales of towering heroism, all told in disturbingly historical accuracy. <laughs> See how our forefathers founded the mighty U.S. of A, tackle delicate political issues, and make our land truly free. Starring five-time Academy Award winner Channing Tatum as George Washington in that, that doesn't sound America, right. the motion picture. See the Declaration of Independence's origin and the harrowing acts of bravery made by a few good men to save our national treasure, Wait, the United States of America. Movie. America, the motion picture. I don't know enough about Channing Tatum to dispute it. Also starring Golden Globe nominee Will Forte as Abraham Lincoln, (laughs) the man who emancipated the slaves. In America, the motion picture. Is freedom really free? (laughs) Featuring Jason Manzoukas as the American sniper himself. Our top gun, Samuel Adams. America, the motion picture. Feel like if I never say, before <laughs> has a film vi- so vividly captured the blood sweat and tears of our home and the patriot thomas edison as portrayed by olivia munn with guest star killer mike as black smith but will this mr smith go to washington find out in america the motion picture it's like one of those but stuff. i gotta tell you <laughs> Our country start wasn't so beautiful. No, no, it was a, it was a rocky one. It was so rocky. Two close friends had to fight for our Independence Day. In fact, it got so rocky. Three other people had wow. to join in to help our team, America. This was our Patriots Day, America, the motion picture. I'm just not with say Matt Andy Sandberg <laughs> as the traitorous son of a bitch Benedict Arnold, America, the motion picture. Quick, Stu, just get him, see. And also Rocky movie. Four. <laughs> Wait, what? I feel, I feel like he just has like a, like ten thousand pages of this. It sounds like I one think... of those '70s movie trailers where like they just keep going. <laughs> and you thought it was like over. Just... <laughs> I'm just gonna tell you about each what? cast member. Oh, shit. Blood ocean. <laughs> I know who you are. How many drops of blood in ocean? Blood, ocean of blood. Blood ocean. He's <laughs> got like a million drops of blood <laughs> in a foot. All right. Uh, Stu, thoughts on whatever that was? <laughs> Uh, well, uh, that, well, on the synopsis or the movie? Cause I, the, I don't know. The, the, synopsis movie, the movie, the movie, the movie, we're just going to um, let the synopsis stand on its own. Okay. Uh, yeah, the movie. So, uh, I was kind of like up and down with it for a while. Like, so at some points I felt like the, 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 obviously it's a, uh, you know, satire and stuff, whatever what? parody, whatever you want to call it. Um, Wait, Darren yeah, told I've me never... this is historically accurate. Oh, okay. Well, I don't know what to say about that, but it, it's probably the loosest um, use of the phrase based on true events I've ever <laughs> seen in a work of art or work of anything, which is fine. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, if you go in, you know, that's what you're, you know, okay, this is what's happening. Okay, we'll go along with this. Um but it, like some some of the humor was almost like too. Maybe I'm just getting old. Maybe it's just it just seemed like it was some some of it should have belonged on like TikTok or something, or or I don't know. Maybe it was it was just it was kind of just kind of like I don't know, just too. I'm just, I guess I'm just old. I'm getting old. I think like was some it- some of it wasn't like I was like oh this seems like it's more meant for someone who's in college right now or something uh or you know high school but anyways but there were still parts of it i liked um still plenty of it to like it obviously a very well animated movie um i really like that animation style um 
and then but yeah like it was kind of up and down like some some of the parts i was i thought was pretty funny other parts i thought that's where i went back to like oh god i, I don't think this is i don't think I i'm roll. the target demographic for this joke um but yeah i mean overall it was fine uh i'll give it like a i'll give it like a six but then something happened at the end of the movie that made me change it to a one so what? You didn't. It didn't automatically get it, make I'll it get an America it. So, out of ten. Huh? Was it? What? Oh, it didn't uh, give you the Fourth of July vibes that you like. It would have. It would have gotten an America out of ten, except for this one thing that happened in the movie. So. Ah. Okay. Um, well, I guess we'll have to go into the spoilers. I'll get into that in the spoilers. So. Okay. So this is well, this was two hours, right? Um, hundred and twenty minutes long, something like that. Sound about right. Seventeen hundred and seventy-six minutes long. Was it really? No. Dude, that's like you know how long that is. <laughs> uh, well, I was wondering. Interns, quick, see. crunch that number. <laughs> how many hours is that? Um, that would have been awesome if it was seventeen seventy-six. Uh, but we would be Seven, also it's be the seventeen be... minutes and seventy-six. Seconds, which I guess that, is eighteen minutes and six seconds. Actually, <laughs> that would have seconds. <laughs> actually, but that would have been perfect. I think that would have been a perfect length for this thing, um, in terms of what we're looking at. Um, but before we get into what my thoughts are, Ben, uh, what were your thoughts on America the Motion Picture? Uh, well, I always think that whenever we review comedies and whatnot, I, I feel like it's very. I feel like our scoring is always varies quite a bit on some on a lot of comedies you know and i feel like you know comedies are are like that you know it's like you either like it or you don't if you like that type of comedy you don't and i i actually like this type of comedy like i know it's really fucking stupid but damn like <laughs> holy shit yeah, i really just kind of went around for the ride i guess that's the uh that's the demographic the Ben's younger gen yeah yeah ben, the ben target demographic <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's it's really stupid. Oh man, he's wearing a stupid shirt that says, you know, two two best bros. Man, that that fucking rocks my socks. Hell yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's just like you know, just really really stupid humor. And uh, um, I did like that there was, uh, I guess what what Stu was saying, like how a lot of the the jokes were very hit and miss. It it kind of was for me, but it was that they were throwing so many fucking jokes at you, whether it was like you know actually spoken words or it was just like a visual gag that you, i didn't really have time to really think about you know how much i hated the last one or if i didn't like the last one you know because by the time i was thinking about it oh there's a new thing on the screen you know it's just like holy shit it's like almost like sensory overload and they just try to, I, I know i've complained about this before but i felt like the the pace and motion the, sickness no 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 the oh. like the the amount of fucking motion jokes sickness. and gags that they the, Yes, mo motion sickness. You got motion sickness. Yes, it. I got Dramamine for this one though. <laughs> and let me tell you, the the uh, the amount of jokes that they do throw at you in the short amount of time they had, I felt like was ridiculous. I I came and really, I I had to really sit down and think about what my favorite jokes were, my favorite visual gags, because you know there were so many to fucking choose from. I was just like, fuck, that one was good. That one was good. That one was good. You know, it was uh. I don't really have any logical. Like high, would you say like high, uh, high quantity, lower quality? I, see, that's the thing. Like, I did think that some of them were high quality for me, but I, I know I'm being super biased. That's the thing because I can't really justify why it's good for anyone except for I, myself. I think this would it's have been a like really with, great. Yeah, go ahead, Sue. Uh, I was going to say it's kind of like with, with like you and Darren and your like important videos playlists on YouTube where. It's yes. just like, yes. isn't it funny how this the audio got all super loud and crack, crackled the speakers? Like, no, that wasn't funny oh, to me. Wait, wait, but... wait, hold on. I think I can bring up my dissertation about. <laughs> <that place. laughs> See, it's funny when you try to destroy people's uh, speakers or eardrums if they're listening through headphones. Yeah, so this is actually a callback to uh, early Buster Keaton. Actually. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I can't really justify why I like it. I I just. That know that I, I just like know it. that I like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's an eight out of ten for me. Yeah. 
Okay, for um, for all that, I wonder if this would have been a really good uh, movie for the three of us to watch together, where Ben's laughing uncontrollably, mm-hmm. and me just, and Stuart sitting shut there. Shut up, Ben. I can't hear what's <laughs> going on. Oh, like, I roll. It wasn't that funny, Ben. Shut up. <laughs> Look at the fucking movie. <laughs> hey, can we turn on the captions? Because I can't hear half the stuff over Ben's Stop, laugh track. I can't hear the jokes. <laughs> but I can see them. <laughs> uh, for, uh, for me, I, I think I'm, like, kind of in between. Between the two of you guys, when it comes to the the rating for this one, I would give this a uh, hearty seven out of ten. Um, only because I feel like this is the if Bro Force the the video game and Drunk History had a baby and it was animated, this is the movie that that, that would have uh, resulted in that uh, in that marriage. Um, and I I agree with Ben that they throw a lot of jokes at you. Stu, I also agree with you in the fact that there were a couple of times I was like, what? I mean, as the was only I... person who plays golf on this podcast, you should be on my side. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. No, I'm just kidding. Um, he said you're old, David. Hey, you're old. Fine. Hey, by the way, Ben, <laughs> welcome, to the, welcome to the club. <laughs> um, right. What just happened? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Ben, Whatever. you're also old now. Yeah. Huh? Welcome to the club. Yeah, exactly. Look, dude, you got to get your hearing aids replaced. What? <laughs> um. So, yeah, no, I, that's probably the best way to explain it is drunk history plus bro force. And if they had a baby, this Equals is the movie. Yeah. America. Well, I, I like how the um, the tagline for the movie is. They uh, this summer they redraw they're uh, they're redrawing history, so this is somebody. I mean, this would be great if somebody were to uh, miss an entire high school um, like American history class and goes, "No, don't do, don't worry. I'll just watch this movie. It'll get me caught up. It'll be fine." And they use that as as part of their assignment. Um, if you know, we all have. Uh, a common friend in Darren. If you were to watch this, how many historical inaccuracies do you think you would have been able to find? Over or you know, under 1776? I wouldn't be counting that if I were watching it with a friend like that because I would be actually counting the amount of veins that you could see popping out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, I think it was pretty good. I think it was a little bit long um, in general, but... Uh, other than that, yeah, it was okay. It was a pretty decent time. Um, all right, let's go over to spoiler zone because clearly Ben has some a lot of things he wants to talk about. Stu wants to get something off his chest, and I guess I'll watch. He let, we'll let him watch. You know, yeah, just stay in the corner. The don't touch anything. Can I hold the camera? The I'll show. hold the camera. I'll just hold the camera. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on a tripod, David. We don't need you to hold the camera. No, 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 no. Hold the tripod. <laughs> Got to keep it planted don't, on the not ground. How, it's not what those are for. Nope. <laughs> Got to keep it from from moving too much. Just, uh, settle it uh, here. Okay, we're in the spoiler zone. All right, Stu, so, I got it. So why? All right, so I'm in. We're in the spoiler zone. So first, I'll extend an olive branch to this movie. Um, kind of like well, where I was going with from what Ben was saying, uh, I do agree. There's like a high, very high volume of jokes, but with that high volume, you kind of have a lot of duds. Mm. Um, and I guess that's just what happens when you just have basically every line of dialogue or every other line of dialogue contains some type of gag or joke uh, that they try to make. But one of the things I did like, uh, one of the recurring, and it's a recurring joke in this movie, is how British, basically all the British soldiers just say, like, Gavna, Gav, Gavna. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Gavna. <laughs> uh, I like that part. That was pretty good. Um, and then there was also like a very, not even really a joke, but like, it was the part where, like, towards the beginning and in the first act, or after, like, towards the end of the first act, when like they first their first failure, and like George Washington's planning on like breaking up, like giving up, and just like he's just sitting there with the guitar, and then uh, like Martha comes in and it kind of like re, you know revitalizes his, his uh, you know his uh, you know his interest or whatever in the cause, and and then he starts giving the speech, and then uh, Geronimo's just like, "You're the only one who quit." Yeah, <laughs> I think I think that was like one of the things I really liked about the movie. It was kind of like similar to uh, what was it to not another teen movie where it's just like background like 
little quips here and there. It's so <laughs> fucking quick. It's just like, you know, like you're the only one who quit. <laughs> you know, it was like it didn't even take up a full second. It was like he was still talking. He's like, you're the only one who quit. <laughs> <laughs> He's like getting all like down on himself and then then gives a really rousing speech and then <laughs> just stand there like you're the only one who quit. <laughs> um fuck, I forgot about that one. Fuck that that's, that's also a good one. I'm writing that down. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um but okay, so now I'll get into the part that really made me take a take I was taken aback by it. Um was towards the end, uh right before the big showdown. Um and I don't, I don't know if maybe it's just just joke, whatever. Okay, but I I feel like audiences in general will probably just be like, ha yeah, that's a thing, because they're making fun of the thing when they were talking about. Okay, here's here's all. Well, first of all, don't even get me started on the Walmart buying a gun. Uh, time waiting period. Okay, yeah, that's <laughs> that's not actually how it goes down. But I okay, whatever. <laughs> I'm sure some people think that's how it goes down and they're, they're poking fun at that, but that's not actually how it goes down. But anyway, they just have to tell them that you're going Simpsons. hunting. <laughs> at least in The Simpsons, he actually waited a few days. <laughs> yeah, he, there was a montage for that and he sat in a chair yeah. outside of... Yeah, Waiting was, is the hardest <laughs> part. <laughs> and then like Marge's sisters go by. <laughs> that was pretty good. Anyway, <laughs> that was my favorite part. Um, but then uh, anyways... So then they go, okay, uh, you know, here's your AR-15s, but you have to give them back afterwards because they're super dangerous and nobody ever is like, okay, so let's, let's settle down with the with the jokes here. That's not it. I, it's like, a, it's weird. It's like a joke where they're kind of like poking fun at it, but at the same time, it feel like they're like kind of serious in their intention of, uh, it's like a, it's like a joke, but also a criticism. Stu, knowing that not... you're going down this way, can I guess what your thing that you really didn't like? The reason why you gave it a one after it was that? Yeah, like, it was. It was. Like... I just said it. It was the part where they're talking about you know AR fifteen. Oh, you got to got to give them back afterwards. Could you? Boop, boop, boop. And that's like no, that's the t- entirely opposite of what you're trying to convey in this. Oh, portion I thought of you, the were movie. you were going to say you were going to be you were upset that they portrayed AR-15s as auto, like automatic rifles because no, they were just no, going... it's, <laughs> no. I might have a deeper criticism of it than that. Mm, misrepresentation of the dangers of an AR-15. Yes, guns that's are true. bad. Also, Stu, when are we going to go shooting in the desert? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It, it just seems so anti anti whatever I don't know what's the word antithetical to the to the just the, the whole freedom the joke the... even the joke premise of the movie so um yeah I can see yeah. that it's like like a, a point counterpoint kind of thing right it's like you're oh, like you're trying to make a point about how all these freedoms that are, were being put down because of rules and stuff like that and at the very very end they're just like <clears throat> like here's a were, nudge nudge wink he's, wink they're he's they're literally making like uh you know trying to make it seem like a bad thing that the, they're equipping all of their all of their basically their whole side with the ability to fight off the british and they're trying to like paint that as a bad thing so it's just i don't get it but the uh, second was... article was that that for the constitution was actually designed just for that right exactly yeah so, <laughs> so I, I think a lot that. of um <laughs> I think a lot of the uh, the different illusions and the different messages that they were trying to get through, you know, a lot of the satirical points was kind of just thrown against the wall and hoped it would kind of stick and land. And I don't think it really worked in the current context, like you're saying, you know, like maybe, yeah, like if you made a more compelling point for a modern times, like they were trying to, like they're trying to make a lot of modern jokes and sometimes it worked and sometimes it didn't. And it was because purely of the current setting that they were in. Right, so it was just like eh, maybe you shouldn't try so hard at this one particular joke. Like I get what you're going for, but it's not working right now. Right. Yeah. So, um, but I think it kind of ties in, and this was kind of a thought I had creeping in the back of my mind. And again, maybe this is just because I'm getting old, but um, so there's some parts of the movie. Obviously, this everything is completely 100% historically accurate. Um, <laughs> But there, I feel like there are some things in the movie that were clearly, uh, you know, jokes, fabrications, whatever, or like, you know, uh, what do you call it, misrepresentations or revisionist mm-hmm. parts of the of like actual history, where people might not be, they might not even be aware of that 
of what part was a joke or not. I'm worried that there are people like that who are watching this movie and they're like, oh yeah, that, you know, totally. We did do that. That's stu- that sucks. Or, you know, just, you know, stuff like that. So maybe, it, but again, I might just be getting old. <laughs> um, okay. Ben, your, your favorite moments, I guess it sounds like you have a quite a list of them there. Okay. I'm just only going to go through two of them because there's just so <clears throat> many to pick from. <laughs> but, um, one of the uh, recurring jokes I liked was just the random inclusion of random um, different people. No, like, or yeah, there's the random different people, like the like historical figures, like I at Abraham Lincoln's funeral, at, like a uh, fucking what's his name was there. Um, shit, the guy that does all the musicals, like Hamilton and shit. Oh, uh, uh, you mean like the modern day guy? Yeah, yeah, uh, um, Lin Manuel Miranda. Yeah, yeah, Lin Manuel Miranda as Alexander Hamilton was at the fucking funeral, <laughs> and like, and Denzel Washington, you know, yeah. just like, okay, I, I guess, you know, it's just like, you know, they kept doing that over and over and over again. So I like that, and the inclusion of like random movies, you know, like random movie, like references, like Roadhouse and fucking, um, what was another one? They I didn't did, like. Let me tell you this: I didn't like the swordfish one. Oh, actually, I was gonna say I, I, like the <laughs> I, I thought that was like one of the laziest jokes. <laughs> yes, yes, come on, give it to me, baby. Oh, yes. Uh, uh, there was a there was a reference to fuck it, or I really like the the stupid transporter one. Got me. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, trans- like, transporter, get me out of here. It's fucking Jason yeah. Statham. It's just... See that that was a good one because it was kind of subtle because you don't really, if, unless you're paying attention, you don't really see that the driver is basically Jason Statham. Yeah. There was another really super subtle one I didn't really recognize until I was doing a random rewatch of like, I was trying to take down like, oh, where are my favorite parts, you know? Uh, It was the dream sequence one, right? This one, I don't even under, like, this is what I mean when I say like, I can't really justify why I like it because usually in comedies, I try to say like, oh, you know, there's like a lot of buildup for this and there's like background information for this or, you know, it ties in with the rest of the movie. This one's just completely out of left field. But the the dream sequence where Abraham Lincoln is talking with um, George Washington, right? Like it was originally all completely white and it was supposed to be in heaven or something, right? And then it mm-hmm. cuts to this random warehouse. Uh, if you're well, paying attention, empty. that fucking... <laughs> huh? No, no. The warehouse that they're talking in is the warehouse from fucking Reservoir Dogs. Oh, yeah, I was about to say Reservoir Dogs. Yeah, so I'm just like, why, why are they at the fucking warehouse for <laughs> Reservoir Dogs? You know, it's just like, it's so fucking random, but I just couldn't help but fucking laugh at it, you know? But like, didn't that, they that's also how I lead up, the whole movie. Didn't they also lead up to, like, they're like, well, we were planning on doing this thing where the, the Hydra, and then, but we're saving that budget for yeah, a yeah. fight, a giant fight scene 30 minutes later from now? Like, isn't that... Yeah, but I mean, like, the show? joke of... Inc- uh, I guess the joke of including the set piece from Reservoir Dogs, or oh, okay. like the like set, just not even the set piece, just the set from Reservoir Dogs. It doesn't even make any fucking sense. Like, oh yeah, let's reference the transport because that's funny, or like Roadhouse because like they slash someone's neck, sure. But like literally, they're just in the set for Reservoir Dogs. They don't cut anyone's ear off. Nothing. It's just <laughs> the fucking set from Reservoir Dogs. You know? Like that. That's what I mean. You know, I think that's a very good example of what I mean when I say that this movie, you know, throws jokes at like like five jokes a second you know and a lot of them just happen to stick with me i can't justify why but i really liked it and the uh the final thing that i really liked about this movie also kind of lines up with everything else i don't know why i really liked shannon tatum's voice acting like <laughs> when he was like getting choked out or something or like when someone's stuffing something in his mouth it actually sounded like when he Someone went to record like, something, he just stuffed like a sock in his mouth. He probably <laughs> did. Yeah. yeah. He's just Method like, acting, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> well, as a five time Academy yeah, Award like, winning actor, I mean, he's a he's definitely <laughs> known for his method acting, right? Wow, you are very well studied on this. <laughs> on, on Channing Tatum. <laughs> on Channing yeah. Tatum. Yeah, but I think Channing Tatum really sold his his part. You know, he acted the shit 
out of George Washington. It's probably his best performance ever because I couldn't, <laughs> couldn't even really tell it was him voice acting. I thought it was Chris like, Pratt. <laughs> if you hadn't told me it was Channing Tatum, I kept thinking it was Chris Pratt until the, obviously yeah, the, could have easily been yeah. Chris Pratt. Exactly. He, he really just sold the enthusiasm of it, you know, just like that stupid boyish wonder of being like, oh my God, I got chainsaws for arms, you know, <laughs> and he just really fucking brought it to the screen. So, yeah. <laughs> You you drained the gas from my chainsaw arms while I was sleeping. <laughs> yeah, like, holy fuck! I I do remember that line. Yeah, that that specific line really stuck out to me because he really fucking sold. It. He's like, "You are a fucking psychopath." <laughs> and I felt like there's some some lines he was like yelling into the mic, right, and like trying to exert anger. And like, it's one of those things where you know you got someone on Discord and they start yelling into the mic and just cuts out, you know. Yeah, because I can't capture that much. Yeah, I felt like they're clipping. <laughs> yeah, I think it happened a few times when he was doing that, so <laughs> it just made me laugh even more. You know, but yeah, John three sixteen. John three sixteen. I thought you were gonna say the the thing about like different people was like when they reference like, oh no, I'm George Washington with the O. With the O. Oh, like, <laughs> holy fuck, like I oh, never... John. I've learned that from studying John Wick, the candle maker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or oh my god, the. uh what was it? Um, when they're at Abraham Lincoln's funeral, it's like, who are you? Oh, I'm George Washington. <gasps> the the guy who invented peanut butter? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the same one. The very I, same. I don't know. How, how did you guys feel when they uh, used Freebird in the way that they did? I liked it. I don't know. I, I love Freebird. <laughs> Who doesn't I mean, like Freebird? Not if was, you're American, you love was, Freebird. That, that was like the most American part of the movie. Yeah, Freebird. <laughs> when everyone bands together to fight off the evil British. Under Freebird. and their and their <laughs> and their uh, double decker ATATs. Yeah. Oh, there's star there's a Star Wars references. I wonder how many references you'd be able to write down. How many times? Movie well, reference, ben, basically. Yeah. yeah, the entire movie is a reference. All right, um, guys, any yeah. other thoughts on this one before we go ahead and wrap this one up? Stu, Ben. Um. Okay. No. Wait. Yeah. Um. Oh. America, the motion picture starring. Um, hold on, let me get the thing up. <clears throat> starring. <laughs> fuck, we went over all the main people. Um, Bobby Moynihan. This SNL alumni, current cast member. I don't know. <laughs> this um, this battle's getting Judy hot. Greer as, as a. As, oh yeah, Ju- Simon starring Pegg. Judy Greer as, even talk as about Martha. As oh yeah, Ma- Simon Pegg. As what, hot Martha that? Washington. Oh yeah, hot ass Martha Wa- stacked ass Martha Washington. This this battle is getting hot as Apollo thirteen. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, Lucky Yates is in it too, huh? Yeah, he was. He had a few lines. But was, yeah. Who was he? Who was he in it? He was like Babe the Blue Ox and random oh. people in the background. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> and just like Amber Nash, Amber Nash was also random people in the background. Uh, I wish they were in larger roles. At least I never. I didn't even. Yeah. I couldn't have guessed that Andy Samberg played uh, Benedict. Arnold. Yeah, I, I was trying to pick out his voice. I couldn't find it, even though I knew he was playing Benedict uh, Arnold. Simon Pegg, I'm I did. There was a couple of lines in it. Simon Pegg? Yeah. There yeah. were a couple of lines that he said that I was like, oh, okay, that's definitely him. But Andy Samberg, I could never tell. I guess his like, accent was too was heavy. too evil. Yeah. He was too evil sounding. Real quick, uh, what's the Cliff Notes version as to why why did they have... I mean, I guess actually, I guess it's not really worth a question because it's kind of just a silly movie. Because I have to say, why do they have Abraham Lincoln in it, but at the same time, why is Thomas Edison in it? Why is Dave the Blue Ox in it, and Paul and uh, Paul Bunyan, and because America? Know. Well, so, I, I guess I, it's just like an anthology of, of characters. Well, I mean, I know that the the main producer, one of the main producers, uh, Phil Lord Chris Miller, they made a TV show early on in their career called Clone High. And they will always try to um, incorporate the character of Abraham Lincoln into everything they do, pretty much. <laughs> did they make Abraham Lincoln Vampire Slit Hunter? No, they did not. Oh, okay. <laughs> but uh, Abraham, yeah, Abraham Lincoln was one of the main characters of Clone High, which was Will Forte's, like, earliest, one of Will Forte's earliest roles. I see. And so every time they have Abraham Lincoln in one of their projects, like, they'll try to jam him in, and they'll also try to get Will Forte to come back to voice him. <laughs> so <laughs> that's see. why. That's why. All right. Very good. <laughs> but, but I also, needed more Will Forte. 
I do. I know. Holy fuck. I love Will Forte. I, I love that man to death. So <laughs> he's coming back in McGruber. And Are he's they making also, a movie? Uh, it's a TV show. Uh, a TV what? Show. And uh, yeah, I'm really excited about that. An actual McGruber TV show and a revival of fucking Clone High. Now that is going to be amazing. Holy shit. One of the earliest victims of cancel culture. Clone High. Oh my god. We're doing it, boys. I, I have no idea what that is, but Ben seems excited. I am. Holy shit. And we know how that usually works out. So that's a good place for us to go ahead and end <laughs> today's podcast. All right, uh, guys, join us next week. As Is there going to be any objections to Black Widow? It's Black Widow. Shut week? up. Well, well I was just asking. I don't know. Ben might have some obscure Japanese anime movie where he wants to really, really. He's going to watch that watch anyways. Movie. I can do both. Wait. Well, he didn't watch <laughs> Minari for months because he wanted us to review it together. That's, that's not an anime. That's Korean. And that's live action. What the way, way to be <sighs> racist, David. <laughs> I I'm the best racist in all the country. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> ah, so good. All right, there's definitely a couple the of fastest all right. racist. The fastest racist, that's right. Um so guys, join us next week as we cover Black Widow as our movie of the week. Um, Harry and the Hendersons. That was another reference in the movie. Oh, oh yeah. Holy shit. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> and he turns into Robocop. <laughs> I like that part where he turns into Robocop. Yes. Uh, <laughs> all right, guys. Join us next Anyways, week as we cover. Uh, yeah. Uh, join us next week as we cover Black Widow as our movie of the week. Next week, you can find us on all of your favorite podcast places soundcloud spotify youtube google and apple Podcasts. um also don't forget to follow us on twitch at twitch.tv slash dose and a half cinco's as always i have been your host david i'm Stuart. i'm ben uh guys don't forget to tip your reiki master stay safe out there guys we'll see you guys in the next one okay bye, bye.